fail. So a very important issue I need to cover today. I was not aware of this up until now. So I'm using OBS here, so please bear with me as I'm gonna be doing this in a single take here. So the issue is I recently rendered out a 12 minute video segment using the video plus audio settings that Blender offers you. And this is a generic way that everyone would, you know, usually render out their videos. So I set an audio codec AAC or black in this case, and I rendered out. And what happened was later in the video, like the eight minute point, um, the audio started to offset. It was starting to be out of sync. So basically the audio was a little bit out of sync. And as time went on, it would be more and more out of sync. And I just want to look at the waveform here to show you. So again, it was an 11 minute video I rendered out using the video plus audio method. And the bottom waveform is what it should look like. The top waveform is what it ended up looking like though in the rendered video. So as you can see here, we zoom in. These are like five second intervals here. And these are supposed to line up and they don't. They're offset by about one to two seconds here. So as you can imagine, if I have a lip dub or lip sync and the audio doesn't line up, everything is just all messed up. That's no good. The other thing to note here is that the ending, the lengths of the two waveforms are different here. So the first waveform again was the audio plus video rendered waveform and the bottom is what it should have been in actuality here. We're gonna cover why that is. It's not necessarily important in terms of something you need to worry about or fix. But the main issue is just the offset here that we're going to be talking about. So how do we fix this? Well, the fix is to not use this at all. So just set it to none. Render out your video content for here, whatever settings you want. And just render out your audio using the mix down settings here. And then you would just combine these using FFmpeg. So again, you get FFmpeg online, the stable version. Um, extract it, go to your bin, grab FFmpeg and probably FFplay, go to a folder and toss it in with whatever next to the videos and audios you want to combine together. And then you would um, open the command console and just use this command here. So just my input, whatever the file name is, uh, in this case b.mkv, I'll change that to b.mkv. The audio file, audio.wav, so b1.wav, so just change b1.wav, and I would just assign an arbitrary um, output file name, so try in this case, and uh, make sure the extension lines up to whatever the input video extension is. And again, to get a command, blah, 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 window, it's just a shift plus a right click anywhere in your folder here and open command window, and I just type in that command. Hit enter and you should be good. Um, and again, the reason to do this command is make sure you don't uh, re-encode because that can cause artifacts and stuff like that. So that's how you fix it. So let's talk a bit about why this happens though. So the fix is just not to use this at all whatsoever. So this is something you won't, I have a 60 second segment here, for example. I'm just going to play it to give you an idea what it is. Then at the very end, we just have a very little kind of bit here. Makes a little bit of sound here, a little waveform there. And so it's pretty much just this track, this channel here, and that one at the end. There's not really any kind of mixing down happening. They're pretty much just independent. I imported them into Blender and I'm just gonna export them out again. There's not really anything happening there. So the thing is with this segment, if I use these settings here, the audio codec setting here and rendered out, I probably would not notice any issues at all because it's so small at first that it's you probably won't notice anything at all until after like three minutes so if your video is under three minutes you probably don't need to worry about this issue at all and you can you know if you want you can just use these settings and not really worry about it all that much there will still be a bit of offset it's just a case of the offset doesn't build to anything significant until after about the three minute point so but if you have long videos like 
over like probably five minutes, 10 minutes, etc. Then this is a real issue you need to be aware of. And the reason this happens is because audio and video are the length of audio and length of video is measured in different units. So with video, it's measured in frames. So if you remember one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., which is dictated by the FPS. So a second is equal to 24 frames. So 24 of these things here is one second. Uh, but audio is just measured in seconds. So as you might imagine, um, if one's measured in frames and the other's measured in seconds, and we're creating a mashup of the two according to um, the video format of frames, there's weird things that can happen, right? We need a proper conversion to happen to make sure everything lines up properly. And the thing is, this proper conversion is in fact happening in the VSC playback, which is great. Okay, the problem is, so anything you get here is you know what it's supposed to be but the thing is that does not apply when you render see the render has kind of a placeholder system and we talked about this with many like a lot of the issues with audio is that in fact it um it plays itself a certain way in the vsc playback but when it renders it does something completely different so that's an ongoing thing with a lot of these settings, etc., and it applies here as well, in fact, and it happens to be a fairly significant one in this case. So the calculations that line the audio and the video up are not occurring on render. So that's why you get that little bit of offset that just compounds and compounds and compounds. And so if you go over a certain amount of length of video, you're gonna get um, an out of sync issue, sync issues. So just to illustrate this, if I um, had a 10 minute video and I rendered it from zero to 10 minutes, you know, my eight minute point is gonna be out of sync. But if I just rendered from the eight minute to nine minute point, then I probably won't notice any issues. It's gonna be in perfect, more or less pretty good sync. It's not gonna be perfect sync, but it's gonna be, you know, not noticeable sync. So if I rendered in chunks, you can bypass this issue more or less but if you're under as a single you know video you you get a huge kind of a sync issue here so i want to show you a few things just to illustrate this a bit further um so here we're going to use this project as an example here so again 60 seconds i have four waveforms here the first two um, are made with the audio plus video method so again, I rendered the uh, setting an audio codec here and a video codec here and just you know, render that out. And that's what they are here. The second one though is before I rendered, I hit something under scene and audio called update animation cache. And I don't necessarily know what if this still applies today, um, what it does specifically today, but um, there are plenty of bug reports and uh, just uh, documentation saying that you would um, press this button before you render if you had issues with the audio being out of sync. So there are some specific ones about if you had keyframes on your, um, you know, your volume of your uh, waveforms, for example, and they were not uh, being rendered properly, you would click this button and it should solve the issue. So I don't know if that still applies today because these are fairly old, five, six years old. So I'm not completely sure what it does, but I have noticed a bit of better quality audio if you press this if you before you render. So the audio is a bit richer in my opinion if you press this right before you actually do any rendering. So that's pretty much what I did here. I pressed that button before rendering and using the audio plus video method. And these two, it's the same kind of story, except I use mix down here. So again, using mix down via the audio here, and just a case of pressing the updated animation cache before using that method. So out of the four of these, these I noticed that this one is by far the best sounding. And you know, in general, these are much much better sounding than these two here, which makes sense. 
but out of the four of them, this one is best sounding. So I just want to look at these because this is only a 60 second segment, but I'm going to show you that they are in fact offset. So we look at the end of this big waveform here and just zoom in, zoom in. We get a similar story to what we had before here. So I'm going to play them in a minute and you're going to notice there's not much difference between the two, but you can still see the difference is starting to compound here. So these two have that extra offset by a little bit, whereas these two are where they should be. And if I went to the very beginning, I wouldn't really notice much of anything. But if we get to the end, we notice it even more here. Da, da, da. To the point where we actually have more data in the mixed down version than we have in the video plus audio version, which you know kind of makes sense based on uh, the video plus audio is uh, converting the time to from seconds to frames, and so it makes sense it would cut it off a little bit at the end here, especially when you consider um, just how the VSC you know works in general here. Like uh, I can only move one frame at a time here, and based on my FPS being so low, we have all this data in here that we can't necessarily access and line things up to. So that's one part of the reason why I say it doesn't really matter if you're um, doing you know video content that's under three minutes. You probably because you, you already have this gap that you can't access and line things up to exactly every single audio point to begin with. So you know it is kind of superficial but it does compound and it's to the point where you want what you're doing in the VSE to translate to what you're actually getting when you render and that's not happening if you surpass a certain amount of time so the three minute point okay so pretty much all I want to cover but um, I'll just uh, play this to show you that you can actually kind of hear the offset a little bit it's not something you would um, necessarily notice on its own so yeah so these two again they're the audio plus video method they should sound lined up okay yeah so they sound sound pretty much lined up with each other and they are in fact lined up with each other um, these two it's the same story but if we take one of these and one of these we're going to get an echo, basically. I'll show you here. So that echo there is basically showing you that things are offset. So by offset again, I mean it's like this. They're playing at an offset. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I want to cover here. And again, the best sounding one was this one here. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that's the issue. That's how you fix it. Um, again, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say. Just make sure this is set to none. Basically, don't render out any audio from here. Again, go here, mix down, and just combine an FFmpeg. If you need a refresher in FFmpeg, you check out my other tutorial video or just Google it. Um, and in terms of settings, try Matroska H.264 and perceptually losses are high quality. Uh, just if nothing else, if it's, if it's still not working, just try these settings for your render because there could be a whole bunch of other things that are happening. If you still have this issue where everything's lined up and playing properly in the VSE, but you know the rendered version, everything's offset, uh, let me know in the comments. There are some other uh, links to things that other people have tried that, has, that have worked for them. So your case might not be my case. You know, things can always be different, uh, but you know, I'll put those links there. Hopefully you can find a solution to this. But in general, you know, Blender has a bunch of placeholder holder systems. They're not what you expect. And you just need to learn how to work around them. 
So the mix down is in fact rendering the audio the way you want it to be rendered. So just, just do that, okay? The quality's better, everything's better if you do that. Set the accuracy to one. Use a higher format like WAV or FLAC, and you should be okay. Okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna end here. Any questions, comment below. If you wanna, if I missed anything, by all means, provide it in the comments below. Um, educate me and everyone else. But uh, yep, thank you, bye.